come with us to the Channel Country, the remote outposts near the border of Queensland, South Australia and New South Wales. Towns and sheep stations which depend on the air for their food, their mail, their contact with civilization. For the Birdsville track is no longer just a dirt road, it's a pathway through the sky. And if you're going to Birdsville, don't forget the bird seed. You'll need it. One track leads from Brisbane. You fly west past Condamine and Roma and on to Charleville. Straight flying so far, but from Charleville, even the air route twists and turns. For this is like a milk run, servicing a dozen stations and towns in the Channel Country. Soon Charleville is left behind, and the plane with its precious cargo of foodstuffs and mail, medicines and newspapers, heads for the lonely, isolated outback. We're headed further north now, northwest to Thailungra, once the biggest sheep station in the world. All that below is one property, hundreds of square miles and just one lonely homestead. From Thailungra to Windora, and Captain Brook and his crew will get a great welcome there too. You can imagine how much they depend on the plane's arrival. Southwest from Windora is another station, South Galway, and another enthusiastic reception as Wendy Trass and Beverly Barr meet us to collect the station's supplies and mail. There's another track to Birdsville too. This one starts from Adelaide and goes via Lee Creek and Inaminka. It's a supply route too, and one of its most important stopping places is Merimelia, where a team of 64 men is drilling for oil. They need fresh food too. And only when these things have been delivered does the plane fly on towards Birdsville. It's not so long ago that Aborigines walked from station to station. Walkabout, as far as these boys are concerned, it's little more than the title of a magazine. Well, it looks as if we weren't kidding when we said this was a milk run. And now, just over the South Australian border, in the southwest corner of Queensland, Birdsville. It's a town with a population of 20 white people and 60 Aborigines. It's 1,020 miles from Brisbane, and it lies right on the edge of the Simpson Desert. By the look of it, Birdsville is strictly for the crows. The Diamantina runs here, and on to Goida Lagoon, and thence to Lake Eyre. And this is the end of the line. This is where the two tracks from Adelaide and from Brisbane meet. This is Birdsville. Outside the town, the Simpson Desert looms. Sand and gibber country. Go west from here if you dare. Even the camel trains used to go south, and they gave up in the 1930s. Mechanization had reached the outback. At this stage, there was a population of 300, and there were three hotels. They were built of sandstone and mud bricks, and they used burnt gypsum as cement. This one became a hospital in 1923. Today, this is the only licensed hotel in Birdsville. The hospital has been transferred to this modern building, erected and staffed by the Australian Inland Mission. The two sisters, Sister Darling from South Australia and Sister Marshall from New South Wales, look after the spiritual as well as physical health of the children. Most of them are Aboriginal, aged 8 to 16. Birdsville is certainly no thriving metropolis. It's a tiny town on the edge of a vast desert. Most of its people are Aborigines, including two-thirds of the children. But all the kids play together a game called Casti, which is a combination of rounders and bedlam.
The full-time state school, which replaced the third hotel, is only 12 years old. And in any school where there are 33 pupils, there's bound to be one who's late. The school building has been specially designed for the summer heat, and it's a lot cooler than the earlier stone buildings. There's only one teacher, David Claridge of Brisbane, but the youngsters are bright, and black or white, all have the same opportunity. Birdsville, a thousand miles from the nearest capital city, a small town perched on the edge of the desert. A town which knows and accepts loneliness and isolation. But the youngsters will not be as lonely as their parents were, because planes fly in and bring news, visitors and supplies. The planes which fly the aerial pathways, which are the two tracks to Birdsville.